The Cyberly Mansion is a legacy of the Indiana gas boom era and bears the name of its first residence. Our story begins in 1886 when a huge reservoir of natural gas was discovered under East Central Indiana. It kicked off the Great Indiana Gas Boom. In Kokomo and Howard County, business leaders offered free gas and cheap land to entrepreneurs who would locate a manufacturing business here. Monroe Cyberling and a group of Akron, Ohio investors accepted the offer in 1887. They became one of the first manufacturers in the state to use the natural gas for large-scale industrial production. Cyberling built the Kokomo Strawboard Factory, which the Kokomo newspaper called the largest factory in Indiana and the largest strawboard factory in the country. 20 to 30 tons of straw were processed into cardboard boxes every day. Cyberling and his investors sold that factory and built the Diamond Plate Glass Company. Like the strawboard plant, it was said to be the largest such factory in the country. For the time, it was colossal, capable of producing more than a million square feet of glass every month. Cyberling then organized a second, even larger glass plant in Elwood, along with Hartford City Window Glass Company, the Indiana Rubber and Insulated Wire Company in Jonesboro, and a tin plate plant at Elwood. The tin plate company was the first of its kind, bringing a new industry to the U.S. Construction of Cyberling's home began in 1889. The mansion cost $50,000, roughly a million and a half dollars today. It has five levels, 27 rooms, and 10,180 square feet of floor space. The architect was Arthur LaBelle of Marion, Indiana, and the contractor was Ike Smith. Ike hired 35 stonecutters, but said the job only required 25. He figured that a third of them would be drunk on Monday mornings. In fact, one Monday only two showed up. The architecture is a mixture of Romanesque Revival and Queen Anne styles with Moorish embellishment. Romanesque Revival architecture is characterized by rough stone blocks, arcades, and round towers crowned with cone-shaped roofs. The Queen Anne style includes slate roofs, wraparound porches, and bay windows. When construction began in November of 1889, local residents saw a great barn-like wood structure go up, large enough for construction to continue inside throughout the winter. In the spring, the barn was removed and the mansion revealed. It took another year to finish before Sarah Cyberling and the children arrived in October of 1891. The Cyberlings' time in Indiana was short, but they left an enduring impression. In 1895, the family left Kokomo and moved to Peoria, Illinois. Residents changed quickly over the next decade. Seven different men were listed as tenants or owners, among them three ministers, two doctors, and a dry goods store operator. One of them even attempted to raffle off the mansion. In 1905, Franklin Miller purchased the mansion. He earned a fortune in the patent medicine business. The Cora B. Miller Company was named after his wife, and advertisements carried the image of the mansion across the country. Miller was also a real estate developer, and once owned a large portion of downtown Kokomo. In 1931, he donated land to the city for a park which became Kokomo Beach. He also donated land for Memorial Park Cemetery. The Millers lived in the mansion until 1914, then sold it to George Kingston, who owned the home until his death in 1946. Kingston had become wealthy, manufacturing carburetors for the Model T built by his friend, Henry Ford. When the GI Bill went into effect in 1944, college enrollment began to grow dramatically. Indiana University bought the mansion from the Kingston estate. Its rooms were converted into offices and classrooms. The adjacent Elliott House and its carriage house were added in 1951 and the four buildings served as the IUK campus until 1964. After IUK moved to its new campus on South Washington Street, the mansion sat empty for seven years and fell into disrepair. Falling trees, broken windows and slates, rain and ice led to water leaks. Vandals and pigeons added to the damage. Community leaders had a choice condemn the building or bring it back to life. The Howard County Historical Society argued for a new life. 
In 1971, the mansion was added to the National Register of Historic Places following its nomination by the Historical Society. And in August of 1973, Howard County Museum formally opened in the Cyberling Mansion. Since then, extensive work has continued, including the installation of a complete climate control system, restoration of the ballroom, interior redecoration to a more appropriate Victorian appearance, and replacement of the slate roof. Today, the mansion offers a glimpse into its past, its occupants, and our county history.